Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. I just I had to go around and say hi to everyone. That It's great to see some that I haven't seen for a few weeks. And uh, just talk a little bit. But we... Uh, just thankful to the Lord for the opportunity to come together and to worship and fellowship one with the other. Um, I want to check real quick to see if there are any announcements, any new announcements. Uh, on the back there, we have some things that uh, we had seen last Sunday, Adult Sunday School. We're going to get started on September the 5th at 9.45 um, which is, I think, 15 minutes earlier than normal, right? Did we meet at 10 o'clock before? It was always supposed to be 9.45, but 10 o'clock seemed to be about when everybody showed up. Okay, so you thought put 9.45 in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then also uh, Circle, and we have our elders meeting and board meeting coming up on the 14th. Just a real quick praise the Lord for, uh, for Irvin there. It's uh, good to see him. Irvin was uh, in the hospital this past week. Thursday morning, had a heart catheterization. Uh, his, his blood pressure was real high, and his sister says, we need to go somewhere, like ER. And he went along, and they went, and uh, they were able to find out that there was some things going on that needed to be taken care of. So he had that on Thursday. And uh, came home Friday, and he's, he's here today. So praise the Lord for Irvin. Uh, had a chance to talk with Irvin on the phone on Wednesday, and I think this is really neat. Uh, as I talked with Irvin, you know, we had prayer afterwards, and, and the Lord laid this on my heart to pray, and I asked the Lord just to give Irvin a song in his heart. Lord, put a song in Irvin's heart over, you know, through this time as he goes to surgery and just that, you know, he's, he, he can just be singing this to you and, and not be worried. Uh, he mentioned to me this morning that before he went into the procedure, the Lord dropped in the old rugged cross and he started singing that on the way in. Right, Irvin? And as, as long as you were awake and, you know, he had that song in his heart and I, I really believe um, that there's, there's something to this. And, you know, I share periodically that when you're in the middle of something, start singing. Start praising the Lord. Just start lifting up your voice. You can be in the darkest and the deepest valley, but you know what? He's there. Just lift up a voice of song and praise to the Lord. And I tell you what, I tell you what, things happen that otherwise may not. And yes, it's not like you're not praying and you're not seeking the Lord and you're, you know, you're giving all these things to him, but there's a reason why there's so much in our Bible about praise. There's a reason. And what it is, he wants us to do it, no matter what, no matter what. And that's the faith part, isn't it? That's where it takes faith. When you're staring at a giant and you start praising the Lord and singing, but you know what? That's what's going to take the giant down. That's what's going to take him down if you just start doing that uh, by faith. So, praise the Lord. So, testimony there for, for Irvin. It's great to see Eloise and Cheryl this morning. Uh, Eloise says, I'm going to church. I'm going to church this morning. <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, she must be feeling good enough, right, Cheryl? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, any others? Just a quick praise you, Jesus, before we have our call to worship. Anybody? I see a, I see a hand. Cheryl? Yes, I, I appreciate anybody that's prayed for my grandson about his eye surgery. It's the third surgery he's had for this lazy eye, but it seems like it's, it's the one that's taking. It seems like his eyes are working together now. I thank God for that. Have Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. And Donnell wanted me to, to tell everyone thank you too for thinking about her and praying for her and for any cards and stuff like that. Um, she still she still has her has her you know difficulties here and uh, challenges, but uh, we're just believing the Lord. She's going to help her. So, Amen. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Why don't we start out as we stand together. Let's give the Lord a clap offering and just thank him for his goodness and his love. Amen. Let's all stand together for our call to worship this morning. God calls us out of our isolation to join hands with sisters and brothers in this community of faith. God calls us out of our sin to cleanse us through the sun and to enhance our lives with beauty and usefulness. Our opening hymn this morning is, This is My Father's World, number six. to sing uh, just a well-known hymn together and, and lift up our voice to the Lord. Let's all open up our service with prayer. Father God, thank you for this day that you've given to us. Father, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, fill our hearts with, Lord God, your spirit that we may overflow Lord, that our cups would overflow this day with love and joy and your peace and all of the fruit of the Spirit, Lord God. Father, we thank you for each one. Lord, I commit us into your hands, and we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Father, for the testimonies this morning. Uh, Lord, we know that you are with us, and we stand on that promise, Lord. Father, listen now as we say together the prayer that our Lord taught his first disciples and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts and forgive us of our debtors and lead us not into temptation 
deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the seated. I want to give a, a praise the Lord uh, for Dorothy over there too. Talked with Dorothy a little bit yesterday and Dorothy's been having some trouble uh, with her legs and just being able to get them moving the way they're supposed to. Right, Dorothy? And so uh, she hasn't been able to, to come to service here for a few weeks. And, but we prayed, right, Dorothy? <laughs> Things happen. The Lord does move when we pray. He does hear and he does answer, just not always in our timing in the way that we think. But he does always hear. He always hears and answers prayer, all for our good. Um, wanted to mention uh, Janet Lawrence's brother, uh, Jack Rogers, it's his name. Uh, he has liver cancer, okay? And uh, Jack lives down in Florida, and we need to lift him up in, in our prayers. Also, uh, Joyce, Bradshaw, and okay, she's battling eczema, and so uh, let's remember Joyce in our prayers this morning. Linda, do we know how Norma Henderson is doing? Yes, let's, let's remember uh, Norma. Norma was in the hospital this past week and um, just a serious uh, condition there with Norma. Also, um, if you notice there on the back of the bulletin, uh, Jane Daff, and I appreciate so much. Uh, we have her cell phone number here. Uh, Jane had to go to the hospital, and now she's at the skill center, on uh, community skill center on Mahoning Avenue. Okay, but she is in quarantine. But we have her, uh, we have her cell phone number there, and uh, I got, I got to say, praise the Lord. I don't, I don't like putting anybody on the stop, but sometimes, you know, on, on, I do it anyway. <laughs> And I guess you just get used to that. <laughs> I try not to embarrass anybody, but uh, it's great to see you both. Hello, Praise you. the Lord. Oh! You've got to remember, 10 after. <laughs> 10 after, we have to lock the doors. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you got in. You, you got in. Amen. Praise God. Hmm. Okay, I think I have, uh, I think I have everyone. 
Uh, just let me mention that we have all of our prayer requests for this morning. Continue to remember uh, those here that we have on our prayer list, uh, the current, uh, current ones. I mean, they're all important. You know that. Uh, we, don't, we just don't mention verbally everyone's name each Sunday, but that's why we, we take the time to uh, have this, you know, made for us. So, um, also, Art Toby. I just seen that uh, we have Art here, um, and he has a blood clot. So let's remember Art. Was there? Did I hear somebody? Carol? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, if 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 Grandma's mentioning about prayer, then that's all we need to know. So let's remember uh, Autry. Okay, let's let's uh, bow our hearts together as we lift these ones up to our Lord this morning. Father, thank you. Again, for this day, Father, I thank you for each one, and Lord, for your presence here with us. Father, as we've had time just to uh, talk and share, sometimes, uh, Lord, each service is a, is a little bit different. Um, Lord, we just need to keep our eyes upon you and follow the leading of your Holy Spirit. Sometimes, uh, sometimes people just need the opportunity just to talk. Uh, to share a little bit, and um, yes, we have time to pray and lift one another up, but I know, Lord, there's times when it makes me feel better, Lord, being able to just open up and talk a little bit, and so, Lord, thank you for, again, the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, that this is a, a living, a living organism, like, uh, not just like an institution or some club, but Lord, this is your body. We're all members of your body, and each member is important. Every member has a function and has a part in this. And so, Father, I pray that you would help each one to know that. Lord, it, every member is important. And so, Father, I lift us up to you. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our hearts and lives. Father, we do thank you for your presence, and we did want to give you, Lord, all the thanks and praise this morning for all of your many blessings, for your faithfulness. Lord, I was just thinking of this when, uh, when we were sharing the prayer requests. I mean, Jack, he had a, you know, a really difficult time there that week. He had surgery, and it's like he's, he's right back, and uh, here with us, and Lord, we know that is by your hand and your faithfulness. Lord, it's great to see Crystal and Ruby. Uh, Lord, we thank you for them and that they're here this morning. And Father, for each one, uh, Lord, let them know that, Lord, you have a plan and you have a purpose. And there's a reason why, Lord, that you have called us together, Lord, in this time and in this place. So, Father, we just ask that you would help us to just keep our eyes upon you, lead and guide us, and show us, Lord, the way as we continue to look to you and your word. Help us, Lord, just to take the next step, for we ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, our hymn of communion this morning is Rock of Ages, number 108, another, I think, pretty well-known hymn. And let's just sing this out to the Lord this morning. in thee, 
let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure save from wrath and make be pure could my tears fall I cling while I draw this final breath when my eyes shall close in death when I rise to worlds unknown and behold thee on thy throne rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee and as they were eating Jesus took bread he blessed it and broke it and said take eat this is my body Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather around this communion table, we remember the words of Jesus when he said to his disciples in the upper room, Do this in remembrance of me. Please bless this bread and cup as we partake of it, and may our eyes be open to see you more clearly, and our hearts encouraged to serve you more faithfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's continue in our worship and the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Father, again, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we are grateful that we're able to be here today and lift up our voices with thanksgiving and praise to you. Father, bless this offering now. Lord, we give it to you and ask, Lord, that it would accomplish all that you desire. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but I just feel really blessed right now. So thankful to the Lord. I feel like my heart's going to burst. I guess that's a good thing, huh? (laughs) Praise the Lord. Maybe that's a little bit as far as when he says that our cup should be overflowing. Not just filled to the rim, but it should be overflowing with him. This morning... I want to first of all thank the Lord that as as we have been spending time these last few weeks talking about faith and as those messages were being brought forth, the Lord was already showing me where he wanted to go with this. And, uh, you know, sometimes he'll do that and other times it seems that I'm kind of waiting that week wondering, well, Lord, where are we going to be? <laughs> What do you want us to uh, to look at and to talk about? Well, for this series this morning, and it begins this morning, uh, the Lord was showing me where he wanted us to go, and he wanted faith to be a foundation for this, okay? And what I want to talk about, and we're going to draw some parallels, okay? We're going to draw some parallels from the Old Testament and the New Testament, and we're going to see how uh, they're really just going to coinc- <clears throat> excuse me, coincide with one another, okay? And you know that there are many, many scriptures and many passages and things that we can study that do that. You know, there's, there's continuity throughout Old and New Testament. And we're going to see that this morning. Now, we were talking about faith, and we were looking at the definition, and I said that, you know, Look at chapter 11. It's called the faith chapter. And once we find out what faith is, it'll go through and it'll give all these examples of people who lived by faith, okay? And they'll go down, 
And first I thought, well, we can kind of start there at the beginning and, st- and look at some of these people, but the Lord says, no, we're going to this one. <laughs> so we're kind of like going to do a leapfrog all the way down to Joshua, okay? We're going to look at Joshua, and we're going to see that in his life and in his book called by his name, it parallels something that is very important in our walk right now as New Testament believers for this day and time and this age that we are living in. And what's important to note is that uh, Joshua was the one who was appointed to bring the people into the promised land. We've all heard of the promised land before, right? Promised land. Let me mention to you that the promised land is not heaven. Okay? It's not heaven. As we're going to see, there's some things that uh, they had to do in the promised land that we're not going to be doing in heaven. And that is fighting. (laughs) No fighting in heaven. No battling. No warfare. It's all going to be behind us. But when they were called to go into the promised land, there had to be warfare. There had to be fighting that went on into that promised land. So... A lot of this is going to be centered in the people of God not only entering into the promised land, but this is an important word, okay? Abraham, Abraham was one, he was called, and he lived in the promised land, but he didn't do this. The nation of Israel, when when they were to go into the promised land, and and once they got in, They were to, yes, live in the promised land, but they were supposed to do something else. And this is the key to our little study. They were to possess the promised land. Not just live in it, but to actually possess it. And why I think the Lord is is bringing this particular uh, subject matter up and this series up, because there are many who have entered into a relationship with Christ, okay? Saved, a disciple of Jesus, a Christian. But they've not come into the fullness of all that God has for them as his child, as his, desi- as his disciple, as his, his follower. It's like they're, they're in the land, but they're not possessing it in its fullness. And there is a fullness that we are to begin to walk into, that we can experience. Paul talks about this. Jesus, when he was here, he he was teaching and wanted his disciples to see that there are some things that we are able to gain and to have in Christ Jesus that's part of this blessing of the new covenant, okay? The life of his spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, led by his spirit, being his disciple, being not only following him, but having an active part in what he's doing in his church today, in the body of Christ. There are so many wonderful things that God had in store for the people once they got there. Once they were entering, they were to, they were to enter in. And once they entered in to the land, they were to conquer the land, okay? Once they conquered the land, the land was to be divided up by tribes to where they were able to receive what their inheritance was going to be. This is where our tribe, this is where our family is going to be living. So they entered in to the land. They were to conquer the land. They were to receive their inheritance in the land. And this is what's important. They were to live as the people of God, one nation under God in that land, okay? To be a light and to be a witness always uh, throughout their time there. There was a lot that God had in store for them once they crossed over the Jordan, Once we see Joshua being called and how he gave these promises to him that he was going to be with him just like he was with Moses and that you're going to be the one to take the people in. 
But in going in, Joshua already kind of knew from previous things that the Lord allowed him to go through that taking possession of the land meant there was going to be warfare. But here's the key. Before they went in, somebody appeared to him. The captain. (laughs) The captain of the Lord of hosts. Jesus himself came and was there with Joshua to instill in his heart, to give him courage, to give him faith, to let him know that he was going to be there as they entered in to the land. So many interesting parallels between Joshua entering and conquering the land and receiving all that God had for the people and then living, living that life as a follower of Jesus Christ that parallels the New Testament. If you want to know a book that is so close to Joshua, it's Ephesians, okay? If you've ever looked into the book of Ephesians, you'll see all of these blessings that it starts out in the beginning chapters of Ephesians of all that God has done for us, calling us, adopting us, how we have this inheritance in him, how we've been blessed by him. And there's, there's just so many things, and I'm just, I'm just going to turn there and, and mention them so that you can be thinking about them in the book of Ephesians. And it's, it's good to be able just to take a moment and see this is how God has blessed us already. He blesses us every day, and there's blessings in the future, but here are blessings that he's given to us already. Just think of these. Adoption. We're his children. Acceptance. We're accepted. Redemption. We have been purchased with a price. He's paid for you and I with his precious blood. Forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us wisdom and inheritance. It says that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. There's life. There's grace. There's citizenship. All part and parcel of what God has done because we by faith said, yes, Lord. I believe. I want you to be in my life. Come into my life. Forgive me, Lord. Save me. I want to walk with you. And all of these things he just automatically does and gives to us. It's like he's got this this giant storehouse, this this treasure chest of so many things. It's like he's coming. He's just like poured out all of this stuff on us to where it's like, oh, Lord, Lord. I don't want to say it's too much. It's too much because it's never too much. But things that he's just given to us that we have in Christ that we can be always thanking and praising him for. But as you continue in Ephesians, you see that chapter 4 talks about now the life that we're to live. How to walk. How we walk as the people of God before him and before the world. And then it gets into what, it's, what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to walk in the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit. And as we're being led by the Spirit, chapter 6 talks about warfare, that there are battles that we go through that we have to endure. It's part of our walk with God this side of heaven. <laughs> Before we get to him in his presence, we're to be a people that have not only entered into Christ, entered into a relationship with him, but we conquer, that we're overcomers in this life. And as we learn to be overcomers, we start to understand all of the blessings that's part of our inheritance, things that he wants us to receive from him, in this life and as we receive those things and as we grow in our relationship with him we find that we do and we are that one nation that one people of God living in yes a a world that is contrary to him contrary to his word and his ways because they don't know him 
But what does the Bible say? We're to be lights. We're to be lights in this place and in this world of darkness, always holding forth that word of life. It's an awesome, awesome journey, a wonderful journey. It's not without trouble, and it's not without challenges. But I want to close with this this morning. I've talked a lot about an inheritance. And I started out to say that the promised land is not heaven. Thank God for heaven, that there is a place that we're going. There is a place that we're going to be able to be there with him forever and forever. No more night, no more tears, no more battling sin or Satan, no more troubles, no more tears. It's all going to be behind us. There is a day coming that we're going to be in heaven. But there's an inheritance now, and this is so important. When they were giving their and receiving these inheritances as far as these different land allotments to the tribes and they were all given what was their inheritance but there's a certain people there was a certain people that God said that you know what you're not going to receive what everyone else is going to be receiving I'm going to take care of you you're going to have all that you need But you're not going to have these things over here. You know what you're going to have? You're going to have me. Jesus. The Lord was the inheritance for a certain tribe. And he was letting them know, beyond anything and everything that God may bless us with now, it will never and it should never overshadow the most important inheritance that we all have. And that's Jesus here. Jesus here. That is our inheritance. Everything that we are, everything that we, that we are not, everything that we've got. There was a song that I used to sing as when I was a long time ago about everything I am, everything I'm not, And everything I've got, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can't be completely yours. That's where the Lord wants to take us. He wants us to take us to where we understand that we have a relationship with the Lord of the universe, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we're abiding in him and he's abiding in us And there's not a moment that goes by that he's not there. There's not an instant that goes by that he's not there. So when we're going down in the valley, when we're up on the mountaintop, when we have to draw the sword and we're doing battle and we're going through all these different things, remember, remember that your inheritance is the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, there's a place that we're going. But you know what's going to make the place all that it's going to be? The person that's there. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time in your word. Father, thank you for the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're showing us and reminding us that we have all that we need. We need not look any further to anyone or anything because you are all that we need. Help us, Lord, to keep our eyes upon you. 
Let everything else, Lord, fade. Show us, Lord, things that maybe have come in that have somehow gained importance to the point where it's even overshadowing you. Lord, let there be nothing in between. Let there be no barrier. Let there be no wall. Lord, not even the smallest shred of of a tissue paper. Let there be between us and you and even one another. But Lord, make us one. Make us one with you and one with one another that we can be and will be a bright and shining lamp that all would be able to see you in all that we say and do. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus is calling. Number 434. Would you stand, please? Just as Jack plays, let me just mention, you know, we give an altar call every Sunday, and I didn't mention it before the hymn, but the Lord wants me to give that invitation now. You know, I talked about how the first step is entering the land. Before conquering, before the inheritance, before you're a child of God, before you are the person that God wants you to be, there has to be entering the land. There has to be the receiving of Jesus into your heart and life. That's first and foremost. So as we sing this last verse of Jesus is calling, if you want to receive Jesus this morning as your personal Lord and Savior, if you want to come for prayer, if you just want to spend time with the Lord this morning, you can do that as we 
sing this final verse. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. And all God's people said, amen and amen.